what a week. Let me let me let me just start there. And welcome to the 220. I'm John Paul Schutz. Um, I have done three Zoom calls with alumni this week. I have um, spent a total of 10 hours and 15 minutes on these calls, uh, averaging three hours and uh, 25 minutes per call. So what have you guys been up to? Any, I haven't even checked the news in a while. I mean, that's a lie. Really, I just feel like the John King of the 220 at this point. Man, that guy has some stamina. Uh, I do not have that stamina. But anyway, yeah, I got to hang out with the class of 2010. Uh, some folks who have done the, the, the uh, Shakespeare project quite a bit. And uh, a bunch of the shop assistants, which that one was pretty wild. Went a really long time. Uh, but tons of fun. So because I have so much footage, uh, I'm going to try my best to be getting uh, a kind of diverse array of episodes out uh, each week. Now with the, this many this many shows in the can, I think that I can just uh, kick back. I'm going to try and do one, uh, you know, one call every two weeks or something. That sounds reasonable, especially if I'm getting over three hours worth of footage. Uh, really, on average, with even my first ones, it's most go over two hours. So if you ever want to participate in one of these, um, carve out a couple hours. But I'd still love to have you. Anyway, let's let's uh, let's get started with some of the new footage I uh, have on the class of 2010. Enjoy. So you're you're Alex. Yeah. Hi. Yeah, I was a uh, I was a bi uh, bio major for like three years before I realized I hated it and switched to theater uh, for my last two years. So interesting. Well, year and a half, really. <clears throat> so from bio to theater, mm -hmm. I mean, I've, I've had people on here that started as econ majors. So it's, it's pretty insane. Andrew, uh, it's nice to meet you. Welcome. Hey, how you doing? Doing all right. So, Alex told me that he was a bi biology major. Were, were mm -hmm. you a something else major uh, prior to joining the theater department? Officially? No, I was undeclared for um, I mean, maybe a year. I don't remember exactly when I declared uh, my major, um, but I think it was probably about a year into, um, yeah, sometime in my sophomore year. Okay. I want to say. Yeah. Hey, likewise, man. Uh, not bad. I'm living in Simpsonville now. <laughs> Doing the uh, American dream up here or something. Something, yeah. <laughs> yep. Where, where is Simpsonville? Is that South Carolina? Yeah, so it's just south of um, Greenville. Okay. So, I mean, it's Greenville kind of suburbs in that South Carolina sense of suburbs that right. aren't really suburbs. Yeah, so like right off of uh, 85. Yeah, yeah, pretty much right at the junction of 85 and 385. Okay. Around that area. In Andrew, where are you? Uh, I live in Atlanta, Georgia, which is my hometown. Hey! Born and raised! Oh, yeah? Yeah, hell, man. I'm, uh, I'm from Marietta. Oh, okay. I, grew I have up a house in Smyrna. Dunwoody, Shambly area. So. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I know exactly where, around there. You go to, like, Brookwood? No, I went to Wesleyan, uh, the private Christian school out in the okay. Cross. <laughs> yes, the private school. Hmm. La -da -da. Yeah, listen. <laughs> <laughs> I've paid the price. Trust me. <laughs> I mean, I, I remember, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And a lot has changed in 10 years, man. Uh, a very <laughs> different person now. <laughs> So yeah, so by my calculation, we have three more people that are gonna that are gonna join us, and then you guys get to regale me with all of the amazing stories of what transpired ten years after I graduated. 
if we can remember most of those things, yeah. <laughs> it's amazing yeah. when you remember. You know, if you, 2020 alone, that feels like about 47 years ago. So, you know. Yeah, I was. I don't think I was born yet before 2020. Oh, there's Liz. Here comes a picture of Liz. Hi. And there's, her there's the rest of her. Hey, Hello, Liz. Liz. Hi, guys. How are y'all? Doing fine. What a fancy, fancy living room you have. Uh, it is the, thank you. It's um. Living room and kitchen. It's here. like the entire, you've now seen my whole place. Right? Well, I like it, so. Thank you. I have a bedroom that way and a closet right behind me through a wall and then a bathroom. Hi, Jillian. Hello. Liz, I'm in the Hi. same boat. If I panned my camera, you would see my kitchen in the other end. You would see like, well, the rest of my TV. And that's, that's the end of my apartment. Yeah, it's a real like, uh, it's, I, it's perfect size for me. Uh, but yeah, people are like, wow, this is so fancy. And I'm like, well, there's a very real reason why my desk <laughs> is so fancy. An exact place that it sits. Andrew, are you still in Atlanta? I am, yeah. Nice. What, yeah. Part, what part are you in? I am still in the good old D Wood. Um, but I am actually applying to grad school. So uh, potentially moving to Athens because I'm applying to UGA um, cool. for nonprofit management. So wow. yeah, kind of a new direction. Um, I've been working at a nonprofit for years, um, but was still trying to do some kind of theater thing or film thing or something like that on the side for a long time. And I think this past year was when I finally kind of was like, it's time to do something else. Yeah. <laughs> and um, I mean, I've been in that mindset, I think for five years now, but just didn't know um, wh what to fill that void with. Um, and a lot has happened both globally and nationally and personally where I was kind of like, I, this is a, a good direction to take things. So. Yeah, yeah, Andrew, is that program connected through the public administration? Uh, or is uh, it no, it's a school of social work actually. Okay. Yeah. Um, which I never would have, I, I don't think I would ever be a social worker. That's a little too, you know, <laughs> close to home. Right. Um, but, um, you know, I, I had some, uh, a friend in a really bad situation this past year and kind of helped him out and, um, did a fundraiser for him and was like, Oh, this is something I can do. And, um, you know, I think a lot of us to kind of segue into what our conversation will be, um, when you, you know, you see yourself having a life in the arts and then sometimes that doesn't happen. And, um, you know, where do you fill that void of kind of um, the satisfaction that you got from that? Um, and it kind of took me a while to to come to this place. And again, I'm not in yet, but I just <laughs> just applied uh, this past weekend. Uh, shout out to Mark Landis for um, letter recommendation. Thank you, Mark. Oh, that's sweet. And uh, John Paul, just to give you a heads up, um, Josh Keller is supposed to be joining us. I don't know if he's helping put his kids to bed they're old enough to where i think their bedtime is potentially past seven o'clock but they might be well are we'll his youngest you. his youngest could have a 7 p.m i don't know what bedtimes are lj's so, lj seven because she has school so like that's what so she's at 7 p.m right now oh word well Michael, who Michael say, but I'll, I'll send him a, i'll send him a message but he's the only person that we were expecting that is not here, not here. Well, and that's, I, I have four kids, so I understand how it is. Uh, although my youngest are, are 10, so now I'm just like, you you can just go to bed, right? <laughs> go, no, no, no more juice. <laughs> that's what I told Liz whenever she gave the time. I was like, I just have to make sure that Michael doesn't actually have something at this same time because one of us has to put our four-year-old to bed so you have to be a parent oh my god you have to be a parent you know it's overrated so responsibility this will also be a theme andrew that responsibility <laughs> is completely overrated <laughs> 
And really uh, not necessary because I like, I, I mean, uh, you were talking about your apartments. I actually have a house that I didn't really buy. My lawyer, my partner's a lawyer and she was able to take care of all this. And 100% the whole goal is once, she, once uh, we get married that I'm going to quit and be the stay-at-home dad and just take care of everything. I'm just waiting for Michael's film career to take off and then I'm done. I'm quitting. I'm staying at home. <laughs> we're getting a nanny. Stay at home dad was supposed to be the plan. <laughs> and my life went completely in another direction through multiple missteps. Oh. What, what's that? Where, where do you live? So I live in Washington, D.C. right now, but I have a house <laughs> in Smyrna, Georgia. That is oh. where my, my wife lives with uh, my stepchildren, who she has 50% custody of. So that's why she's there. And then my bio kids, they live with their mom in uh, Clayton, uh, or I'm sorry, Canton, Georgia. So cool. only if, it sounded like you were familiar with Atlanta when he said he would. So I'm using specific. Yeah, yeah Andrew, and I, Andrew and I both went to school. I went to high school and grew up in Atlanta uh, from very similar next to the woods. So everything you're saying is very familiar uh, to me. Oh, and next assume to, to Andrew also. Yeah, with my work, I am in DC, oh, awesome. which is which is really awesome. Uh, my wife and I were just talking, we had date night last night because you, know, you have to schedule these things. And we were talking about how like I had been stationed overseas for 11 straight years and then kind of lucked into this position in DC. In the, I was offered two positions in DC and Beijing, China. They were like, what if I was in Beijing right now? Like, we would never <laughs> see each other. With all the lockdowns. And yeah. uh, instead, I was able to, when I put, was put on telework, I was able to pack my car and I drove to Atlanta and I stayed there for five months before I was needed back up here to do something in person. That's wild. My stepbrother uh, has lived in China for the last nine or 10 years and he happened. And his wife is Chinese, and he happened to be here visiting uh, my dad and stepmom in January. And he was supposed to leave in February, and he has not been able to yet. <laughs> yeah. So just like switching off between my dad and stepmom's house and my stepsister's house in Mount Pleasant and my other stepbrother's house which was in Colombia and is now in Maine. So he's just been bebopping around. And he's by himself, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah, and his wife is stuck in China. So I have a bunch of friends who are also foreign service. So they were at post and had come to DC solo just to do like a couple weeks of training and got stuck here for months away from their family. Oh. One of them had a, or has, I'm not gonna say had, but, not a newborn, but a under one year old. It was only going to be gone for a couple of weeks. And it turned into months that she was away and her husband was pulling down the fort in a foreign country with a very young child. Yeah. That's rough, man. That sucks. Yeah. That sucks. Jangle, where do you live these days? Where are you in your party? Yeah, I'm at yeah, I'm in Simpsonville. Um, uh, just like I said, I was just telling you earlier, uh, Simpsonville, which is you know just south of Greenville. Um, we you know we we were in Charleston for so long, and then it just got to the point where we couldn't afford to live there. I was doing a, a full time tailor, uh, tailoring gig um, on, on King Street, and Morgan was uh, you know doing her her job as a public defender, and it just got to the point where like the only places we could afford were about forty five minutes out of the city and since we both worked downtown that was like an hour and a half commute every single day to get to a place that didn't really have that great of schools either so we started looking up in the simpsonville area where she's from and found a, a much significantly cheaper house that we were really lucky that the the guy who lived in here previously had passed away very suddenly and all his kids were like we have a house full of stuff we don't need anything um, and so we got the entire house fully furnished for, I think under a quarter million. 
um, for a third of a third of a year, a third of an anchor of, of property too. So it's you know it's a, it's a good little house. We like it a lot. Um, it's a good house for us to. It's got extra bedrooms and everything, and we're getting married in May. So hopefully, going to start uh, filling it with uh, kids and on a little bit. Yeah, yeah, we really. He oh, said he has extra space, so let your brother know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Steven Two Steven. extra bedrooms. Yeah. Perfect. Steven needs to be there <laughs> in the middle of the night to teach English in China. If you're good with that, then. I mean, n no, but. <laughs> You know, she, Morgan has to get up early. I don't go to sleep until two o'clock anyway. But you know, she has to get up early, so I probably it probably wouldn't be that great of an idea. Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> so, Liz, where are you right now? I'm in Denver, Colorado. Okay, and Jillian? Uh, I'm in Charleston. Okay, so yeah, where in yeah. Charleston are you living now, Jillian? Uh, we closed on a a townhouse uh, in North Charleston on. March 3rd <laughs> <laughs> and then the college shut down <laughs> along with like the rest of the United States on March 13th um so we were originally gonna move into this place it's uh four bedrooms three and a half bath three-story townhouse so it's like got a nice amount of space and everything I'm actually mm -hmm. in the downstairs bedroom it's like a master bedroom kind of thing that serves as our office area um and uh, so we were originally going to move slowly over the course of two months because our lease at our apartment didn't end until May. And I wasn't sure how intense the lockdowns were going to get. So instead, we called up Cougar Moving Company and said, when is the soonest you can come move furniture from one place to another before you might get considered not an essential service? <laughs> and that was a week later. So we went from doing a two month move to like a, a one week move. Um, of course, there was still tons of crap still at the apartment. So we spent the rest of the time slowly bringing stuff over. But yeah, so we're in North Charleston now. We're um, near the airport. We had to expand out. We tried to look in West Ashley, but it is very expensive. And so for 50,000 less, we were able to get like twice the amount of bedrooms. So <laughs> we're like, we'll Hi. do that. Also, Good. Um, you said something about the college shutting down. Do you work for the college now? Yeah. Uh, so I am the assistant to the dean for the School of Languages, Cultures, and World Affairs over there now. Cool. Um, nice. I've been in that position since October twenty. Sorry, October twenty seventeen. I had to think of how long it had been. Nice. So I've been in that position for three years. Um, before that, I was an admin for the English department for six years oh i kind of just Didn't worked for the college once yeah you never left <laughs> <laughs> Jillian, wait i have a question when you say you were an admin for the english department is that code for you or the marie alexiak of the english department yes <laughs> <laughs> let me tell you i was waiting for marie to retire because i was like that's the job i want i just want to have marie's job she's still going no, oh, she finally oh. retired, but she retired at the point that I had gotten the new job and it actually would have been a pay decrease at that point. <laughs> not like a whole lot, but enough that I was like, I'm not taking a $3,000 pay bump. I love the theater department, but I also have bills. So, um, and then you so, can get yeah. that cool ticket printer thingy in your office. Yeah. I mean, that's worth it, right? That's what I wanted. I kept waiting. I kept waiting. I kept being like, hey, yeah. Joy. Or Janine, whenever Janine got in there, I was like, Janine, when's she going to quit? I want her job. I want her job. When's she retiring? I think Andrew makes a great point that if I had had Marie's job, the only thing I would have done was create tickets for anything. I'd be like, well, time for class. I brought tickets. If you could please have this for Alan's. Uh, <laughs> Admit one for a great day of learning. <laughs> yeah. Please redeem for a high five. Uh, yeah, so there would just be a lot of litter, I think, around campus with custom tickets. Just random tickets. Yeah, but I think it, I would have gotten fired immediately, but there would be a lot of great memories. Misuse of this resources. Is, this one says redeem one to get Alan Lindroff off topic. It's, there's like a thousand of these. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. 
That was my favorite game, the game in his class. <laughs> Get him off topic. <laughs> Which yeah. took five I minutes. With John Olbrich. Was John Olbrich still there for you guys? Yeah, yeah. John Olbrich was my uh, intro to theater teacher, actually. Really? I didn't know he did yeah. the intro classes. Huh. I think he did, like, for one year. <laughs> yeah, and then it was like, yeah. Let's and then he was like, I'm never right. doing it again. Yeah, never doing <laughs> it again. <laughs> so when I took uh, lighting with John, I think, Liz, you might have been in that class. Um John, so it was like I was in that class, building, wasn't I? You might have been. The new building had been built. And oh no, no, no! no. Studio, and but he was like, "There's no safety like button to press. Like if you fall and injure yourself, so your final exam has been canceled." And we were just like, "Okay, <laughs> sounds good, John." I, um, I unfortunately was not in that class. I still had my lighting final under the stage of the Emmett. Right? Yeah. I think, uh, who was in my class? Rachel Nelson was in my class. And was Gray in your class? Gray was, I don't think she was. She was in, mm, she might have been. George Caruth, I think, was in my class. Cookie Face was in my class. Cookie face. Cookie face. I saw Cookie Face just this weekend. Or the last weekend. There was like a whole little contingent of folks here in my class. But I think Rachel and I think it was George. Rachel, George, and I were all quite bad at lighting. And we would <laughs> take turns taking notes in any given day because it was so hard for us to pay attention. And I continually thought that John looked like every Winnie the Pooh character personified rolled into one. And I feel like once you think about it, you can't unsee it. Like I love John because the whole semester with that ex that description. I, I love John to because like I was always like legitimately impressed by how like how much he really loved what he was doing, yeah. and at the same time how disappointed he was that no one else cared about it to the level that he did. Especially in our class, like he was just constantly like, like be really excited about telling us something, and then looked around us, and he'd be none of us would be caring. Uh, <laughs> and I, I mean, I don't know. Technically, I was in your class too, Liz. The gray was in your class because I did her, I did her uh, final for uh, for lighting. <laughs> I, think uh, I, I really don't. I know if she was in my class or not? I can't remember. <laughs> It's like when I had stagecraft and like the work, the how you had to have the hours that you were building the shop and everything. Mm -hmm. The entire time, I just kind of like befriended slash flirted with one of the like guys who actually got paid <laughs> to work there. And I was like, "Can you hammer this for me?" They told me to do it, and Pete would then hammer it for me. And I was like, "Thank you." Oh, Pete! Pete! Pete. <laughs> Not creepy, was, Pete, right? No, 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 no. Oh. Pete, Pete Moral. I was like, Oh yeah, yeah. He's great. He was a good friend of mine, and I was like, Hey, hey. So I just kind of <laughs> hung out with around him around Stagecraft Lab the entire time because like, I love that for you. This. <laughs> what a delightful story. <laughs> like, Stagecraft Lab. Like circumventing. No. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so were you all uh, performance majors? No, I, like I wasn't at least. Well, like all, all of us talking about like how we didn't like to do work with. Were you guys all performance majors? Well, no. <laughs> I mean, trying to get engaged, but I'm I'm guessing Alex because you said you had a tailoring job that you were costuming. Yep. Yep. And that's what uh that's what I did. That was that was more where I was uh, I was headed with that. But yes, uh, you guys clearly disliked the tech side of things. Not disliked. Yeah. Just hadn't. Ineptitude for some of it. Yeah, I was going to say aptitude. So let's go with I'm, that. That sounds I'm, better than ineptitude. I'm giving myself the. I'm giving myself the L. Like right also, there. I I my forte wasn't in lighting, but I did live with Paige Stanley when I took lighting, and that was helpful as she is now <laughs> a professional lighting designer. So that was really helpful. And uh, and Alan Irock or Alan Swick and I were very good friends in uh, college and still. And that is uh, she she and Paige single handedly for costuming and for lighting are the reasons why I got such good grades. <laughs> <laughs> I really yep. liked costuming a lot. 
uh, I really liked costuming a lot. I'm actually about to like repick up sewing so that way I can just sew my own costumes and stuff now. Like, I mean, that's honestly what got me in the theater initially was that like I, like I told you, I was pre-med for three years. And then when I realized I hated it, I took a costuming class and realized that everyone around me was a excited that I could do tech, tech work and like could sew and do all this stuff and was just generally excited to have me there as opposed to like bio like with pre-med if you do well in pre-med that means that someone else isn't going to be getting this uh is going to be losing out the spot so it was so just cutthroat and competitive and then i got did tech work for theater and they're like no no no, please 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 come in please help us do stuff we desperately need that and i just it was i really i've really enjoyed doing the tech work i loved working with noah and um and ricky and honestly um all the that whole crew when we would do when we built stuff for uh just would be building sets i remember we for uh what measure for measure we did like a whole balcony i think that we that we threw up in a couple of days which probably probably couldn't have been the code but <laughs> <laughs> but still <laughs> but when i was when i was there costuming we had a very very small costume shop and uh not that many sewing machines and so all the classes were limited to the number of sewing machines that they had mm -hmm. and, and it caused this bat backlog over the years because people were just trying to get into the class so much that by by the time i was a senior there was just a ton of people that needed it and so they had to do like two or three sections of it but the final product project the final was to build a garment mm -hmm. and uh you had to, it was first come first serve for like on lab hours to be able to go in and work on it. Mm -hmm. And every time I went, there were no uh, sewing machines available. So I went to Walmart <laughs> and walked in. I was like, so what's the return policy? 30 days. <laughs> Even if it's open? Yeah, 30 days, no questions asked. I'll take that. So I, <laughs> I bought a sewing machine and a 12 pack beer and i went to blockbuster video like you guys you guys know what a blockbuster video is oh yeah we had friends yeah. that you guys blockbuster downtown whenever back in the day, yeah, the, 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 back the in the day. day blockbuster yeah. rented like four movies and went back to my apartment and just like did my thing showed up the next day with a finished garment without putting in a single lab hour and they were like <laughs> And the, this entire time, I it hadn't really thought about the fact that I was dating one of the, the shop assistants, oh. one of the, the costume shop assistants. And But, like, they're looking at all the stitching, which was pretty shit awful. Mm -hmm. And we're like, okay, this is pretty consistent with what you did in class, but <laughs> what did you do? <laughs> so I, I was like, listen, I can bring you the box and the receipt. Do you <laughs> want to see that? And they're like, yes. So I thought it was that they wanted to see if I really had my story like added up. Yeah. Turns out that they didn't like the fact that they didn't have enough space or enough uh, machines and they photocopied the uh, receipt. And like, we're going to use this as an argument as to why we need yeah. more sewing machines because you should not have had to go and buy a sewing machine. I was like, no, 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 that's not a big problem. I'm going to return it like later today. <laughs> But no, it's, it's, that's not that's not what the actual issue is. <laughs> it's bigger than you. <laughs> that you had to do that. Right, right. <laughs>